Good afternoon. Just a few hours ago, right here in this very chamber, Mississauga City Council sat down to begin our 2023 budget deliberations. As the third term mayor and a city councillor before that, this will be my 12th budget deliberation here at the city, and I have to say it is by far the most challenging. Cities, just like our residents, are dealing with the impacts of inflation and the rising cost of doing business. Our finances are still reeling from the pandemic. We have not yet recovered and are forecasting a deficit of $52 million in 2023. This alone is a lot to manage. Each year, Council sharpens our pencils to keep increases to property taxes competitive and fair, but it's becoming increasingly difficult. We want to continue to deliver services that you rely on, that make your life better and easier. At the same time, we need to invest in our city to keep it in full working order and plan for the public transit, parks, community centers, fire stations, and critical infrastructure that keeps our city safe and improves your quality of life. Yesterday, the province passed Bill 23, the More Homes Built Faster Act, which puts all of this at stake. The city of Mississauga stands to lose up to $885 million over 10 years in development charges and money for new parks. That's equal to losing 20% of our capital budget. The numbers are devastating and they're baffling and deeply concerning. Where is this money going? Well, allegedly to developers to encourage them to build more affordable housing. However, there is no guarantee in this legislation that the savings that are being given to the developers will be passed on to the home buyers. Let me be clear, the market dictates the price of homes. Under Bill 23, property taxpayers will be funding developer profits. While we can agree and certainly appreciate the province's desire to incentivize affordability, it can't be done on the backs of cities and our taxpayers. This legislation, which is in force as we speak, will be a big hit to your wallet. It will see the average property tax bill go up by 5 to 10 percent, or approximately $300 to $600 on average a year on the average home over the next decade. And this is before any other budget pressures are applied. Never mind exploring any increases to services or any new programming. It also doesn't include the impacts to the region of Peel, which we understand are equally grave. After all, it's the same tax bill. None of this is fair to our property taxpayers or our residents. It's tough enough out there as it is. The province continues to argue that municipal fees are adding over $100,000 to the price of an average home of the GTA and that we are sitting on large amounts of reserves, which is just not true. Builders pay the city development charges and the money to build new parks so that cities can build the infrastructure and support the new growth that they are creating. These reserves are earmarked for our 10-year capital project. The large infrastructure projects like bridges, transit, fire stations, and community centers that keep our city running and make it a great place to live. We don't collect money we don't need, and we plan 10 years in advance because we need to save money to build projects of this magnitude. 
I know Mayor John Tory was addressing the media just a bit earlier, and the province has plans to address some of their concerns through an audit of municipal finances focused on reserves, funds, and development charges. Should the same audit happen here in Mississauga, which I understand may be forthcoming, I would welcome the opportunity to correct the record and run the province through our numbers. We are fiscally responsible in Mississauga. I would also welcome a similar commitment that Mississauga be compensated for any losses from Bill 23. I stand here with a promise today to Mississauga residents that Council and I will continue to have your voices heard on this to lessen the impact to our taxpayers. We want to work with the province to achieve our shared goal of addressing affordability and building more homes. We just need to get on the same page as to how we get there. And I'm confident that we will do just that by working together with the provincial and the federal government. Thank you. Madam Mayor, we will now go to questions. Certainly. I will open the floor to the first questioner, Noor Javed from the Toronto Star. Noor, go ahead, please. Was, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, my question was, um, so as of yet, you haven't had any commitment from the province um, the same way that the City of Toronto had today in terms of uh, compensating for one third of their budget shortfall. We have not been consulted, Noor, and although I understand there is a commitment forthcoming, I have not yet received it. That is correct. Can you talk a bit more about the commitment? Like when you say commitment, what do you mean? No, I'm sorry. I, I'm, you must have misheard me. I said uh, there ha is no commitment, although I understand a similar letter uh, is forthcoming. And I would welcome a letter and a full audit and the opportunity to show off our finances. I would welcome them to the table to come and consult with us and allow us, in the same way they are doing for Toronto, to open up our books so that we can show them our reserves and how fiscally well-managed they are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Noor. Uh, we're going to move on, Madam Mayor, to the next question uh, from Tess Kalinowski. Tess, did you have a question? Um, Madam Mayor, if you don't get the commitment you're looking for, what what does the city do? I mean, how do you get well, residents to to vocalize their concern, if there is any? Have you heard from residents about this even? Oh yes, Tess, in fact, our phones have been ringing off the hooks and we've received multiple telephone calls, text messages, uh, uh, lots of feedback on my Twitter feed. Uh, certainly it will be a very challenging budget year. Uh, this alone, uh, we, we're looking at a minimum five to 10% increase. In addition, we were facing a $52 million deficit, still a residual effect from COVID and the pandemic as a result of shortages from public transit. And then there are always the investments we want to make in our city to enhance our transit system and build the kind of world-class infrastructure so that I can continue to attract investment and jobs into our city. So it will be a very challenging year, one in which we'll have to look at reducing services or programming or delaying our capital expenditures, delaying our capital budget and our capital plans. Uh, frankly, we would welcome any opportunity to be compensated for our deficit from COVID and, of course, the losses we're facing as a result of Bill 23, which are in the realm of $885 million over 10 years. We would look forward to having the discussion on how we could be compensated for those losses as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tess. Uh, we'll move on to Ashley Newport from Insaga. Ashley, go ahead. Hi, Mayor Carabi. How are you? Thank you, Ashley. Thanks for joining us. Well, so 
One thing that's, uh, I don't know if uh, you'll be able to really answer this, but, you know, the province has said that, you know, they're just waiving these fees on affordable housing and nonprofit housing. But um, have you been given a threshold of what this price is? Um, like what kind of meets the criteria for affordable? And, you know, what kind of buildings and developments uh, will the city still be able to collect um, DCs on? So these are excellent questions, and I will share with you that our city's goal was to build 10% affordable, and this actually reduces the amount of affordable housing, or the province is calling it attainable housing, which would be built. So from 10% down to 5%, and attainable has not yet been defined. However, we know that the threshold changed, so you would have to earn in excess of $95 million per year to afford this attainable house product. Okay. And uh, my other question is just about, I know this is about getting a certain, you know, target met, you know, a certain amount of, you know, housing, you know, built within the next 10 years. And the province hasn't really seemed to, you know, explain how they're going to guarantee municipalities, you know, meet this, this target. Um, do you think that, you know, the city will actually be able to meet this target over the next 10 years of all this additional housing? It's a very optimistic, let's call it aspirational target, Ashley. The number of homes that we've been asked to build is 120,000 over the next 10 years, so let's call it 12,000 uh, per year. Uh, and I will tell you that Brightwater and Lakeview combined only equaled 11,000 units, and we both understand that those are legacy developments, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, Two years ago, we approved over 6,000 units in the city, and that was a, a banner year for us. So this would be double that. And I'm very concerned what will that will do to the character of our city um, and having to build mega towers to accomplish that. Um, it's very concerning how we would achieve that target. And we know that supply isn't an issue in Mississauga. I have 20,000 permits that have not yet been pulled and another 40,000 units in the downtown that can be built as of right. But let's be honest between us, Building condominiums is not appropriate for families or for newcomers. There are people with many children that don't want to live in a high-rise. We have to give an option of choices, a format of home, whether they be townhomes or stacked townhomes or duplexes, triplexes, sixplexes, uh, garden suites, basement apartments, etc. We need more options for our residents, and this doesn't define that either. Thank you, Ashley. We'll go to one last round of questions. I will open the floor to Noor. If you have another question, Noor. Do you have any sense of um, how much the tax increase there could be from the region side? Yes, um, nothing confirmed. They're working on those numbers now. They're also going through their budget process, but it's equal or greater to the one we're facing here at the city. So that means that um, taxpayer and Peel could see, you know, but three hundred, six hundred to twelve hundred dollar increase per, per year per household per year. Correct. That is just as a result of Bill 23. And then we have to consider the payment for our fifty two million dollar deficit as a result of covid, which are it is largely transit related. Um, and then there we have, a, of course, a two percent infrastructure debt repayment levy, a one percent for fire stations. And then the money we want to invest to enhance our transit system. You know, this is, comes ahead of our, all of our own priorities. Right. OK. Thank you, Noor. Uh, last round of questioning. I'll turn it back over to Tess. Tess, did you have another question? Uh, no, I did not, actually. So thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, Ashley Newport, did you have a final question? No, I do not. Okay. That's it for questions, Madam Mayor. Thanks very much for joining us today.